there was this TV program just recently, right? And there was this one particular woman who's part of a political party. And what she did was, she mentioned something in relation to Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Now this woman, obviously now she's in an opposing political party. And unfortunately to bring dirt on the name of the Prime Minister because they're in opposition, she mentioned sometimes Imran Khan is saying this, sometimes he's saying this. And then she mentioned a statement, Muawiyah Along these lines, that there is no mention or credible reference to the Tarzi Hukumat and the style of the governance of Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. Now that is a very, very problematic statement. What we say, look, let me from the outset make this clear. I'm not saying anyone's out of the fold of Islam. We're not saying anyone has gone, you know, no one's lost their, lost their iman here. I'm saying it's not appropriate for you to utter words against any Sahabi. And Nauzubillah, this is not based on some religious dialogue. This is because you want to put your people forward and other people down. So it's for a political, financial, worldly reason. There's no other reason behind it. The gharz is, is I need to put mati on that person, that their shan becomes less and our people go up higher. So for a worldly gharz, a worldly purpose, you will even resort to saying things about sahaba. And while I've, I've touched on the subject of that woman, let me make this very clear. She's also now made a response to say, look, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it like that. Fine, okay, it's between you and Allah. You haven't gone out of the fold of Islam. But please, Allah give us, that when you next open your mouth, please open it correctly. And, ne- and also the channel should have a certain gharat on them as well to say that if people are going to, first of all, if people are going to make such statements, then there needs to be a radi amal by the actual channel to say, I'm sorry, but you made this statement on our channel. Come on air and re-undo what you just did. That's proper ruju. If I, for example now, if I record something and I'm standing here, it's haq that I stand here and record the same thing to go against that, to say what I said before, consider this cancelling that. But again, you cancel what was said previous. Now, if I just send a tweet, or I send a little Facebook post, or I send a little Instagram picture, or I even do a little private recording in my own house, that's not the same. It, yes, you, make, you, are, you are retracking your steps, but because your sin was done in a public way, you should also do that in a similar way. you are ruju from that. What it is, Muawiyah, why is there an attack on Muawiyah radiallahu anhu specifically? Why choose Muawiyah? Similarly, why choose... Not Abdullah bin Abbas, but Abu Huraira. Why attack Abu Huraira? Why attack Aisha? Why attack certain Sahaba? This is the reason. First of all, Muawiyah was the brother-in-law of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He sallallahu alaihi married Umm Habiba, who's the daughter of Abu Sufyan. If you attack Muawiyah, you're attacking indirectly the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam one way, because it's bringing dirt on him, isn't it? To say, well, if that Prophet bought him and he's not credible, then that brings questions on the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you see how the sinister attack works? Additionally to that as well, is that he, radiallahu anhu, was a scribe of wahi. By somebody katib al wahi. Him and also Zayd bin Thabit. These two companions, radiallahu anhuma, they were those individuals that were the important scribes and, uh, and who used to write down the wahi of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay? Ibn Hazm rahimahullah, who was a great scholar from, from Spain, al Andalus, he mentioned from amongst the scribes of Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyidina Zayd bin Thabit was most frequently with Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Second to that, the second wahkatib al-wahi, the second scribe of, of revelation, was Sayyidina Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. They, these two were, the, were, the, were with Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were fortunate to spend time with him day and night. Now if you can bring gun against him, what does it raise questions on? If you can attack Muawiyah, what, what can you attack on then? Quran. Because you're going to say, hold on. Well, didn't he write the Qur'an down? Well, then doesn't that raise questions against the authenticity of Qur'an? Can you see the attack, the sinister attack that happens? This is why ulama are quick to defend Sahaba. Because it just seems like a throwaway statement by saying, Saying nonsense like this, right? The problem is, is that that can be blown out of proportion and used in a very negative way. So as ulama, it's important to make islah of the aqidah of the people to understand, no, as sahaba kulluhum adul, all sahaba are just. We can never reach the lowest of sahaba in terms of their status. Let alone na'uzubillah, because you want to push up your own party guy to now talk against sahaba, that's, that's dangerous. There's khatra for people like this.